Hey, it's Brendan here from WP Speed Fix. In this video, we're gonna talk about Google Search Console. So one of the things we do in our SEO audits is a deep dive on Google Search Console, and we get a lot of questions about it from customers too. So if you're not familiar, Google, well, you're probably familiar if you're watching this video, but that's Google's tool that tell you what's happening with your site, what it's doing in terms of indexing the site, how pages are performing, and it will tell you a lot of things about errors and problems that are happening under the bonnet. And all of these things in here are easy to fix and can have a big effect on ranking. So I'm gonna talk about this particular, it's not an error necessarily, but it's a warning. It's in the indexation site, in the indexation, indexing section here, sorry. And you'll see here, basically under the section, why pages aren't indexed. So you'll see, I'm looking at our WP Speedfix site here, and we have 315 pages that aren't indexed. Google has been crawling and 105 indexed. So some of these aren't a problem at all, but we're gonna dig into this particular area here because this is one we see a lot of, particularly in the last six months or so, since about mid 2024, when AI, particularly Google's AI, um, became more prominent. They seem to be crawling sites much more aggressively and we're seeing a lot more warnings or errors pop up under this section of Google Search Console. So let me dig into this a little bit. I'm gonna show you some examples here. When you're in Search Console, ideally you wanna be in the domain property here, not in the individual website property. So if you have a look, I'll just show you this site here, Didgeridoo Dojo. So you'll see here we have a domain level property, but also you can add all four variations of the URL. So HTTPS, HTTP, and no www and with www. So you wanna be under the domain property because that'll cover everything. So that'll show you all the errors. Otherwise you'll need to check each individual one. So if you use the domain property, that's the best way to go because it gives you the best picture about what's going on. I'll leave that alone because we've already loaded up. So as I said, it's under pages here. And let's talk about canonical tags for a minute because they're really misunderstood and a lot of people don't know what they are. So basically one of our fundamental rules here for SEO is in order to rank for something, you need a page for it. And each page can only rank for one thing and there should be only one page for that thing. So a simple way to think about this is something like a dentist's website. So if a dentist wants to rank for teeth whitening, dental implants, um, Invisalign, these sort of things, um, all the different services they offer or procedures they do, they need a page of content for each one of those on their site. So if they don't have a page for teeth whitening, they can't rank for teeth whitening. So that's a very simple concept to, to grasp. And one of the first things we do with our customers is get them to list out all the products and services they sell. And if there's not a page for it on the website, then they can't rank for it. So it's a simple case of adding that page. And you don't want two pages. So Google gets confused. So if a dentist website had two pages for teeth whitening, it doesn't know what page to rank. You've got two there. So they kind of split the ranking juice in half or the ranking juice is split anyway, and they both rank poorly. And Google, it's called in, in, the, you know, in SEO terms, it's called duplicate content. But there's kind of this middle ground here where each page should be unique and we want each page to only load up at one URL. But in reality, pages can load up at all sorts of URLs. So they could be uppercase and lowercase. Those are counted as different URLs. There could be a forward slash on the end and no slash on the end. Um, there could be all sorts of variations that that single page loads up as. So to solve this problem, we have canonical tags. So basically canonical tags or a canonical tag is a tag on a web page that tells Google that this is the primary page for this content or this is the URL for this content that should rank. So I'll give you an example here because we actually I came across a problem here with this URL. Um, so I'll just load this up and I've just got an SEO tool here installed. But you can see here the canonical tag for this matches the URL. If I added some query strings on the end, so just say UTM, so UTM is a tracking string for Google Analytics, you'll see here that now we have a mismatch. So I have an error here in my tool. So the URL that I've loaded up has question mark UTM in the end, but the canonical tag is still the same. So if Google comes ac across this URL, the canonical tag will tell it, well, ignore this page. This is actually the real page to rank. So basically where Google comes across duplicate pages, the canonical tag sorts it out. So this section is telling us where Google has come across duplicate pages when it's been crawling a website and it has made a, de made a decision based on the canonical tag. We ideally wanna minimize this as much as possible because we're 
in theory, we're wasting crawler time or wasting Google's time. And anytime you give Google mixed signals, that's a problem, it gets confused. So we want to avoid that. So we really need to clean up this section here with the canonical tag. So let's talk about the, the different types of errors you will have here. And the most common one is query strings being crawled. So I'll just show you, let me see if I have it here. Okay, so this one is a WooCommerce site and we see this all the time. So you'll see here, there is two, nearly two and a half thousand pages in here. So this is a bit of a problem. And this is a common thing we see with WooCommerce, especially like I said, in the last six months, Google is getting more aggressive with crawling. So you see here, Google's actually crawling these add to cart URLs and this is a problem. So this is on the website when someone wants to add to the cart, the this is the URL that loads up and adds it to the cart and refreshes the page. Now we want a normal user to load that up, but we don't want Google to load that up. So this also is a problem, not just for SEO, but performance as well. So Google is coming along to the site, crawling these URLs and adding things to the cart. There's also a remove from cart query string, which it's not crawling in this case, but in some cases it'll be adding and removing to the cart multiple times per second. And that could chew up a ton of resources on the site. So this is a problem so these query strings are a problem there's other query strings here you can see where attributes product attributes are being loaded up here and we ideally don't want that happening as well uh, let me see what else there is i think there was in some cases you'll have an add to wish list i'm not sure if there is here we just have attribute um here we go we have some other ones grid cookie gives list um this is probably review pages i'm guessing um let's have a look here what else is there that's pretty much it a lot of attribute stuff okay so those are the query strings there we'll commonly get other ones um not just query strings but search pages particularly for wordpress so the wordpress has two different ways you can search you can search with a query string or the url will have a query string and the query string will be something like this it'll be uh question mark equals or question mark s equals and then the, the search like that or the other way that search pages will be indexed will be forward slash search forward slash whatever like that um, and we don't want those being crawled either that's actually a, a negative seo attack vector as well we we'll often see sites that have had negative seo done on them and they have thousands of search pages indexed so what happens a malicious crawler comes along starts loading up these search pages and then gets google to go and index them so google burns all its crawl budget has tens of thousands of these pages that it's trying to access um and the whole the website just basically gets deranked because it looks like spam um wp login page is not a query string but in some cases um if you have protected content often the crawler will get redirected to a login page we're having having that on actually on the wp speedfix website um, and i'll show you in a second the robots.txt file that we've made to fix that um, like i said woocommerce add to cart pages add to wish list being crawled um, probably would put in their product attributes uh, in some cases marketing strings so i'll just put in their marketing strings i'll put these these notes in the description so marketing strings um, those are also a problem, things like UTM strings. Um, we don't really want those being crawled. Uh, you see here for the WP Speedfix website, so we've got a couple of affiliate strings here. So these are affiliates. Some of those are being crawled. We really don't want those being crawled. And then UTM strings as well. We probably don't want those being crawled. It's not a big deal. We just have one. But if we had hundreds, that might be a problem. We're going to block those as well. You also have genuine uh, errors, so where the canonical tag is set wrong. So we actually had this page where there was an issue where the canonical tag had been manually set and it was set wrong so that's a problem too so in this case something went wrong when the content was published and it actually had the incorrect canonical tag if i just load that up so there's, there's you know when you're looking at these um, if you need more information you can click here oops click here and it will bring up details if we go to inspect url it'll bring up the details of where it's finding those urls so actually let's just go back for one sec that's not what we want um one second oh it is what we want i'm in the wrong spot um so we want to find out where google is finding that page uh is that what we want? yeah there we go um so page is indexed so you see here uh, i've actually just fixed it so it's not showing actually we had the wrong canonical tag so it actually was manually set with a capital letter so capitals the the character case is important because if you have capitals there that's a different url to all lowercase so that can be a problem as well but this page is now fixed so that's not a good example but the canonical tag was set incorrectly um so that was a problem there the other issues you commonly see here um and this is a common one for older sites that have been around for a while so 
the website is loading over HTTP and HTTPS. So it's loading over both versions. There's not a redirect from HTTP to secure. And it's loading off www and no www. So both variations of the URL. So there's a couple of fixes here for that. One is load the website only over secure channel. So redirect everything to HTTPS. Enable HSTS, which we have a video about how to do it in Cloudflare. So I'll link that up here. And you only want to load from either www or no www. Choose one of them and the website should only load from that one. So there should be redirects from all these versions to the primary URL. So you want to basically, those those should be fixed and you know websites typically don't have those errors anymore. But older sites might have that. For these query strings, let's just go back there. Adding things to the robots.txt file, blocking these things is the way to fix those. So this is the WP speed fix one, and I'll, I'll just link that up. I'll just put a note here so you can load that up directly. Um, so here we had um, the crawler being redirected to the WP login page, so we don't want that, so we block the crawler from that. We block the crawler from feed pages, search pages, because we're getting a lot of search spam. Um, this is the patching. There was some issues with, um, so our hosting is cloning the site and some of those URLs were getting accidentally indexed. This is another search string as well. We don't want searches indexed at all. Um, so there's search, search, oh, searches in there twice for some reason. We really want this one here, so disallow search asterisk. So asterisk is like a wildcard. And we're also having some of the WordPress API crawled. So that was the... Um, robots.txt file we set up to fix the indexation issues there. If you have some of this add to cart stuff there, like on this uh, WooCommerce site, we'd want to have something like, you'll see there, well, we'll just type that here. So we want to have something like disallow, um, and we want to have question mark add, actually we'll just do add to cart equals, and then asterisk. So we want to do like that. We don't have the question mark in front of it because if there's multiple query strings there, you see in this one here where the attribute has an asterisk instead of a question mark. Um, so if we have a question mark, then this variation of the URL would not have been picked up. And we want to block those ones as well. So we want to disallow. Uh, and we disallow. Let's do like this attribute. Actually, I want the asterisk before the add to cart attribute. In this case, I'll just do underscore asterisk um, because you can see here there's multiple attributes. So this one, attribute underscore pack size equals 35. And then this was attribute underscore color. So there's multiple attributes being loaded up here and we want to block all of them. So we don't want Google crawlers at all. So you see here, so we've just used this wildcard, which will stop all of those. And um, we really don't want those, you know, we don't want those URLs crawl because it's burning crawl budget and wasting Google's time. But again, we're chewing resources on the hosting itself. Um, and we're also confusing Google. We're sending mixed signals. Now, if you want to see what Google is doing with its crawling, I'll just move this out of the way. Where are we? Over here. Um, under settings here, you can also see what's happening with the crawl requests. So this is another area to look at if you're trying to fix these canonical issues. So quite often, um, if you go in here, I'll just make this bigger. You can click here and you can see where errors are happening. So things like four or four errors. So that's all good. We don't necessarily want Google crawling this. So we might want to block this, this well-known page. Uh, there we go. Well-known is coupling up a couple of times. So, okay. So we have 820 crawl errors here. Um, so yes, yeah, so we have a lot of issues there. So we want to avoid Google crawling this well-known page for sure. Some of these other ones we need to add redirects, but yeah, this one here is well-known is a problem. But inside this crawl area, you can get kind of a better handle um, on what Google's doing and you can block some of this stuff. Like we don't want Google crawling these JSON URLs as well. So yeah, so we probably want Google, we probably want to block Google from crawling this refresh fragments. This is to do with the checkout in the header on WooCommerce as well. Um, and we want to avoid that being crawled because again, that's just chewing resources and hammering the hosting. Let's have a look. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff here that is trying to crawl that it shouldn't be. So those ones we'd probably probably want to block as well. The reason why they're not showing up in the pages section is because they're not full pages. Um, so that's what's going on there. Um, but that's pretty much it for this video. Um, once you've got in to fix them, you want to click here and you want to do validate fix. Um, and if they, uh, if your robots.txt file is working or the issues are fixed, they will go away. Now they won't go away permanently. They'll end up under here. I don't know if it has it on this website. I'll just switch across. 
Um, let me just go back here. And you can see here I actually started the validation on this one because I fixed this before the call or before the video. Um, you'll see on the block by robots.txt. So you'll see that the errors and warnings will move over to here. And that's not an issue. These aren't necessarily problems. It's just telling you why pages aren't indexed. So you can see now here, because we've put the WP login as a disallow in the robots file, now it's being blocked. So Google is trying to crawl it and it's being blocked. Eventually, over time, these will go away, but often it can take you know several months, even years for these to go away. But those canonical errors or can canonical warnings will move over here. So you won't ever get rid of them entirely. They'll, they might drop away over time, but they'll shift over here. And this isn't really a problem here because we don't want any of this stuff crawled. Anyway, I think that's it for this video. That should be a good enough walkthrough. Um, I'll add these notes and I'll link you up to this HSTS video in the description below. If you want more help with your site, head over to our website, wpspeedfix.com. And there's a few different ways we can help. So one uh, for SEO, run our free SEO audit tool here. All these, all these tools take 60 to 90 seconds and there's no opt-in required. So run our SEO audit. This will give you kind of a breakdown of what's going on at the site and it will give you kind of a, a quick overview of any technical SEO issues that are you know immediately obvious and fixable. So that's 90 seconds to run that. This one here is Core Vitals Report. So um, if you have enough traffic, you need 50 to 100 visits a day to generate or have enough data to generate this report. So this will give you a breakdown of your site speed and you know how real visitors are experiencing the site. And then also our site speed test tool. So this will give you detailed recommendations on how to improve your site speed. It also does some basic SEO checks as well, some, some different ones to the SEO audit. So it's worth running them both. And we also have our SEO audit service. So if you want a deep dive in there, we have our technical and on-page SEO audit service. Um, so there's some example screenshots there of, of what that SEO looks like. And we have two options there, an audit only and then audit with implementation as well. Um, and if you're not sure, head over to the homepage and request a free audit here. And we'll have a look at your site and uh, one of the team will tell you what we can do or how we can help and come back to you. Um, and for any other questions, just post in the comments below. But uh, I hope you found this useful. Cheers.